Ever wondered how to fix your own electrical appliances at home? Welcome to the ultimate guide for the DIY enthusiast in you. Learning basic electrical repair skills can be a game changer. It's not just about saving a few bucks but also about understanding your home better. However, while we delve into the world of wires and circuits let's not forget the golden rule. Safety comes first. So, are you ready to embark on this electrifying journey? Repairing your own electrical appliances can save time and money but remember safety comes first. Before we get started gather the necessary tools. It's important to have the right tools on hand to ensure your electrical repair work is safe and effective. First on our list is a multimeter. This versatile device is a must-have for any electrical repair project. It allows you to measure voltage, current, and resistance, helping you identify if your electrical devices are working correctly. Remember, safety first. Always turn off and unplug your electrical device before using a multimeter. Next, you'll need a set of screwdrivers, both flathead and Phillips. These will come in handy for opening up devices, adjusting parts, and securing everything back together when you're done. Now let's talk about wire strippers. These are used to remove the protective coating from wires, exposing the metal underneath for connections. This tool is essential for tasks like changing a light switch or installing a new outlet. Pliers, specifically needle nose pliers, are also important. They're perfect for bending, cutting, and manipulating wires. Insulation tape is another crucial item. It's used to cover exposed wires, preventing electrical shocks and short circuits. Lastly, a flashlight might seem obvious but it's often overlooked. You'll be delving into dark corners and crevices so a good light source is a must. With these tools at hand, you are ready to tackle most common electrical repairs. Remember to always use them with care and to observe all safety precautions. Now let's move on to understanding the problem and how to address it. Identifying the issue is half the battle won. Now that we've gathered our tools, let's dive into the heart of the matter. Understanding the problem. When an electrical appliance stops working, it doesn't mean an immediate trip to the store is necessary. Many times, the issue is something minor that can be fixed with a little know-how and patience. So, where do we start? With a bit of detective work, of course. Let's say you're dealing with a toaster that's not heating up. Instead of tossing it out, consider this. Maybe it's not the toaster that's to blame, but the power outlet. Try plugging it into a different socket. If it works, you've just saved yourself the cost of a new toaster. Now what if the appliance is getting power but it's not functioning correctly? This could be due to a faulty switch or control. For example, if your blender isn't blending, it might be a problem with the switch. You'll need to open up the appliance and inspect the switch for any visible signs of damage. Sometimes the issue might not be so apparent. Say your vacuum cleaner loses suction power. This could be due to a clogged filter or a full dust bag, which are both simple fixes. However, it could also be a more complex issue like a broken fan motor. In this case, the appliance will need to be disassembled to examine the motor. And let's not forget the most common symptom of all, an appliance that's simply not turning on. This could be due to a variety of factors, from a blown fuse to a broken power cord. Remember, troubleshooting is all about observation and deduction. Look for the obvious first, then delve deeper if needed. And while it might seem daunting, don't worry. With practice, you'll become a pro at diagnosing these issues. Once you've pinpointed the problem, you're ready to start the repair. So, roll up those sleeves because in the next segment we're going to get our hands dirty with some basic repairs. Stay tuned. Now let's dive into some basic repair examples. Picture this, your favorite lamp has a faulty switch, or maybe the cord on your trusty hairdryer is frayed. These are everyday problems that can be fixed with a little knowledge and the right tools. But remember, safety first. Always make sure to turn off and unplug any device before you start tinkering with it. Let's start with the faulty switch. The first step is to open up the switch box. In most cases, you'll find a small screw on the side that you can unscrew to open it up. Inside, you'll find the switch mechanism and the wiring. Inspect the wiring and the switch. If you see any loose wires, that could be the problem. Using a pair of pliers, you can tighten the connections to the switch. If the switch itself seems to be the issue, you might need to replace it. Don't worry, replacement switches are easily available and inexpensive. Now let's move on to the frayed cord. Frayed cords can be dangerous and should be fixed as soon as possible. The first step is to cut off the damaged portion of the cord. Using a wire cutter, snip off the frayed section. Be careful not to cut into the wires inside. Next, strip away a small portion of the outer casing of the wire on either side of the cut. This will expose the wire inside. Now you'll need to splice the wires together. This is done by twisting the wires together, then using a soldering iron to secure them. 
Once that's done you can use electrical tape to cover the exposed wires. It's important to remember that while these are simple repairs, they need to be done correctly to ensure safety. Always make sure the wiring is secure and that there are no exposed wires when you're done. Let's recap. For a faulty switch, open up the switch box, tighten any loose connections, and replace the switch if necessary. For a frayed cord, cut off the damage section, strip away some of the outer casing to expose the wires, splice the wires together, solder them for security, and cover with electrical tape. These are just two examples of basic repairs you can do at home. Of course, not every repair is going to be this simple. And it's important to know your limits. If a repair seems too complicated, or if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, it's always best to call a professional. Remember, the goal is to fix the problem, not create a new one. So take your time, follow the steps carefully, and always prioritize safety. And there you have it, a problem diagnosed and solved. Sometimes the issue is beyond a simple fix. There are moments when we encounter problems that are far more complex than a loose wire or a faulty battery. These are the situations when it's vital to understand our limitations as DIY enthusiasts and recognize the need for professional intervention. For instance, if you're dealing with high-voltage appliances like air conditioners or electric heaters, it's best to steer clear of any DIY repairs. These devices can be dangerous when mishandled and without proper training, you're putting yourself at serious risk. Similarly, if your appliance is still under warranty, trying to fix it yourself could void that warranty. In such cases, it's wiser to let the pros handle the repair work. Then there are times when the problem just keeps recurring, despite your best efforts. If you've tried everything in your DIY toolkit and the issue persists, it's a clear sign that you're dealing with something more complicated. Also, if your repair involves working with circuit boards or microchips, unless you have specific training in electronics, it's better to leave it to the experts. One wrong move and you could end up causing more damage than initially existed. Remember, DIY is about learning and growing, but it's also about knowing when to step back. It's about safety and understanding that certain tasks require specialized knowledge. Always remember, if in doubt, it's best to call a professional. So, there you have it, folks. We've journeyed together through the fascinating world of do-it-yourself electrical repairs, from understanding the tools you'll need to identifying problems, making basic repairs, and knowing when it's time to call a professional. Remember, the foundation of any successful repair is having the right tools. From screwdrivers to multimeters, these tools are your faithful companions in this journey of repair and discovery. They help you diagnose issues, make repairs, and confirm that everything is working as it should. But tools alone aren't enough. You need to understand the problem you're facing. Is it a broken switch or a faulty wire? By asking the right questions and observing closely, you can identify the issue and plan your course of action. Once you've identified the problem, it's time for action. But remember, safety first. Always disconnect the appliance from the power source before you start working and use insulated tools. Don't rush. Take your time, follow the steps, and you'll be surprised at what you can achieve. But let's not forget, there are times when it's best to call a professional. When you're dealing with high-voltage appliances or complex systems, don't hesitate to seek expert help. It's better to be safe than sorry. With a little patience and caution, you can indeed fix your own electrical appliances at home. Until next time, stay safe.